for the next 15 weeks to have tax-free items on paddle boards, kayaks, and bikes. Students in a college algebra class are using a virtual tutoring assistant called Conmigo. Here at the fair, people are enjoying themselves, whether it be riding rides like the Ferris wheel. Just after two o'clock today, parents were notified of the code yellow and told there was a large police presence in the area. Scarlett takes this bag and drops it off at doorsteps in the area. And now the Salvation Army is asking for your help in ringing these bells this holiday season. Protesters are gathering to peacefully protest and hopefully save Benny's on the beach. If you go onto the beach, you can feel the sand just slap you in the face. The paperwork I got a hold of today details what happened to an additional victim. This is where the excitement took place after Tommy, the young bull, got loose last Saturday night. Safety features like this mirror for blind spots would not be required for vehicles manufactured before this mirror was made. Dispatchers can get an inside look at what's going on through your cell phone. They're out here patrolling, working to make sure that everyone can enjoy this weekend while not risking the safety of others. This is Blanca. She's the cutest little French bulldog, and she's recovering here at the Palm Beach County Animal Care and Control Center. Researchers with the Palm Beach Zoo spent the day off the coast near the breakers, taking in data on the current state of our coral reef, which is crucial information, especially during hurricane season. Nature's barrier of protection. The coral reef off Florida's coastline acts as a buffer against waves, storms, and floods. Think of it like a, a natural barrier, a natural wall underwater that keeps all that sand in place. But what is coral? It's an animal that lives with a plant that makes a rock. And it's those rocks, those, those solid pieces of the, of the reef structure that keep the sand and dirt from the shore from flowing back out in the ocean. According to the National Ocean Service, every year the coral reef protects Florida's coastline from devastating storm surge, in turn, protecting property loss. But this summer, we experienced a threat to that barrier. So there's been record warm water temperatures in South Florida, in particular from the Middle Keys South. There's been a significant increase in bleaching, which is the coral's response to stress. But luckily, the coral in Palm Beach County is doing okay. Over the course of this summer, as we were doing our surveys, we did see some corals that were showing some stress, but it was nothing like what we saw down in the Keys. Terrell says our coral isn't perfect, but it's in way better shape than expected and could be a saving grace for the coral down south. The entire ecosystem is connected, and, and whether that's you know reefs up north, being able to help reefs in the south, or, or even reefs like around the northern area of Cuba. Researchers say everyone who lives within 30 miles of the coast can help make a difference with our coral reef, and they can do that by using less fertilizer and planting native plants that thrive in our soil. As you can see right now, it's business as usual here at the racetrack gas station. People are pumping their gas, their area up their tires. They're heading inside to get whatever they need before heading home for the day. But that wasn't the case earlier this morning when the unthinkable happened. A young girl was shot by her brother on accident and is now recovering in the hospital. A tragic incident Tuesday morning. According to West Palm Beach Police, around 9.30 a.m., a mother went inside the racetrack gas station, leaving her four children, all under 10 years old, inside the car alone. The 10 year old boy told investigators that he was rummaging through that center console that contained that handgun. The child finding a loaded semi-automatic Glock. And at some point, uh, again, we haven't established the circumstances, that gun was discharged. The bullet hitting the 10 year old boy's eight year old sister in the face. When police arrived on the scene, they found the young girl. She was conscious and alert. She was taken to uh, St. Mary's Medical Center by the West Palm Beach Fire Department uh, paramedics. We're told the other two siblings, a one-year-old boy and two-year-old girl, were also in the car at the time of the shooting. They were both unharmed. West Palm Beach resident Mary Christie was driving by and saw the heavy police presence. I was going to pull in to get some gas and I saw the commotion going on. I just saw cops everywhere. Over a dozen police officers were on the scene investigating the incident, along with the state's Department of Children and Families. West Palm Beach Police saying this incident should be a reminder about responsible gun ownership and making sure a gun doesn't end up in the wrong hands. It shouldn't even have to be said. The gun should have been put away safely. Let's put the guns away safely and keep them away from the kids. An accident could happen any minute like this. This could have been a deadly accident.
We're told the young eight year old girl is in stable condition and both DCF and the West Palm Beach Police Department are investigating this incident. They're conducting separate investigations and pending their findings, charges could be filed. But at this time, there are none. We're told both of the two younger kids who were in the car at the time of the shooting are at home with their family at a baseball field just like this one. What everyone thought was a normal game quickly turned into a scary situation as a West Palm Beach mother had to work to save her child's life. A baseball game the Stuby family will never forget. Back in March, Sarah Stuby's six-year-old son, Oscar, was playing baseball, working center field when a player on the opposing team hit a pop fly. Oscar was going towards the ball, mitt up, looked like he had made the catch, and then, um, you know, shortly after realized that he didn't and something was seriously wrong. He collapsed on the field. His father ran to him. I didn't expect what had happened to happen, obviously. I thought he got the wind knocked out of him. When he got to him, he kind of was kneeling down and then popped up and yelled my name. And the way that he yelled my name, I knew that there was something really wrong. That's when she called 911 and ran out to her son. After doing chest compressions on my son for about two minutes, I broke down. Thankfully, there was someone here, um, Jamie DeFolly, who took over CPR until the paramedics arrived. Oscar was experiencing what's called commotio cordis. It's the same rare condition DeMar Hamlin experienced after tackling a player during a football game. Oscar spent days in the PICU at St. Mary's Hospital, but was eventually able to head home with his family. We count our blessings every day. It could have been very different. Now the Stuby family is working to raise awareness about protective gear players can wear to help prevent this injury. There was a shirt that protected the chest and the left side of the body where the heart is that could prevent or at least decrease the odds of something like this happening. And on Sunday at a baseball game in Boca Raton, you could see the shirts in action as players ran the bases, went up to bat, and were fielding balls. If it helps, makes a difference with one person, that's enough for us. Oscar hasn't returned to playing baseball just yet, but when he does, he'll be wearing one of those protective shirts. And he tells me he can't wait for that day because he misses playing the game. Reporting in Boca Raton, I'm Amber Rob, CBS 12 News. This is CBS 12 News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Amber Robin. While you may still be in that food coma, you made it to the weekend. It is 6 a.m. on your Saturday, and we've got plenty of stories to get to. But first, let's get straight over to our meteorologist, Jennifer Collins, with a look at our weather. And we're awake now at 6 a.m. We're ready to go. Ready to go. <laughs> you ready I need more to go confidence run, there, Jen. Let's go run another 5K <laughs> turkey trot, Amber, together. Okay, I'm down for that. Okay. And today, we are bringing you a full day of travel hacks on CBS 12 News. The goal is simple, save you money on airfare. So we told you about flying to hidden cities, also called skip lagging. Now, we are going to talk about what technology you use to shop for flights. Here's CBS 12 News I-Team Chief Investigator Mike Magnoli. Welcome back. After several years of back and forth, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers has finalized its recommendation for a new water release schedule for Lake Okeechobee. Cryptocurrency schemes cost consumers nearly $4 billion last year, twice as much as in 2021. That's according to the Federal Trade Commission. CBS 12's Katie Benty sat down with a disabled veteran living in Fort Pierce who recently lost his entire life savings while investing in what he thought was a reputable website. Now he wants to warn others before it's too late. And while families anxiously await news about their loved ones being released by the terrorists, many remain concerned about what Israel is giving in return. Arlena Salzbank reports. And another wild police chase involving another stolen car. A West Palm Beach man is now behind bars for allegedly hitting a patrol car, leading deputies on a chase going more than 120 miles an hour and crashing into a palm tree. Deputies say the car he was driving was stolen. Right now, the Martin County Sheriff's Office is investigating a fatal motorcycle crash. Take a look. It happened this morning on Canner Highway east of St. Lucie Mobile Home Village in Indian Town. The Sheriff's Office says a large group of motorcycle riders were involved in the crash and have minor injuries. The road is expected to shut down for a couple of hours while Florida Highway Patrol investigates. Staff we spoke with at Loggerhead Marine Life say if you witness someone potentially endangering sea turtles or their nests, 
You should gather evidence like pictures or videos, and then you can also call Florida Fish and Wildlife to report what you saw. This morning, we're learning how police in Delray Beach were able to crack a murder mystery. The circumstances surrounding the woman found dead floating in a canal was solved thanks to a jilted girlfriend. Christopher Soto is behind bars, accused of stabbing a woman to death, then wrapping her in a bed sheet before dumping her body in a canal near the Kings Point community in Delray Beach. CBS 12's Luli Ortiz shows us how investigators were able to connect him to the brutal murder. Welcome back. This week's hometown hero has spent most of his life designing and building physical structures. Now the architect from Jupiter is helping rebuild lives. He is a longtime volunteer for the Lord's Place, where he spends several days a week helping those who have experienced homelessness and hardship get back on their feet. <clears throat> Oh, well, you're going to talk to me. I, <laughs> I was going to say, welcome back. I just want to get back, to the weather. <laughs> All right, Venus. Well, I like I, talking to you. You were excited about weather, so oh, let's hear okay. it. A new study by Florida Atlantic University and Florida International University shows Florida has nine of the top 15 most overvalued housing markets in the U.S. Research shows the prices are going down month to month, but those markets remain significantly overvalued. Researchers are saying prices could take years to return to where they should be. The city of Fort Pierce is seeing a rise in shootings and the increase is leaving many residents feeling uneasy. In an attempt to address the rising gun violence, a local pastor held an emergency community meeting today. Pastor Anthony Sanders with Holy Vow International Ministries in Fort Pierce posted this to the church's Facebook page, encouraging locals to come and share their concerns. Well, also trying to find a solution. Welcome back. Right now, pet health concerns are circulating. A mysterious respiratory illness sickening dogs across the country and fears it could be spreading. Arlena Salzbank checked in with a local animal expert and has more on what you need to know to keep your dogs safe. At least 15 people have died after storms tore through Texas, Arkansas and Oklahoma. CBS's Christian Benavidez reports search and rescue operations are underway and hundreds of thousands or without power in those areas. And we now know the names of the five people involved in that fatal plane crash that happened yesterday afternoon, and one of them is from our area. According to the Collier County Sheriff's Office, one of the surviving crew members is 27-year-old Sydney Bozeman's from Jupiter. A determined group of pickleball players in one Martin County community are working to make a few of the busiest outdoor parks safer. They're taking matters into their own hands. Thank you so much for joining us on this Saturday night. Remember, the news is always on at CBS12.com. Well, we'll see you back here at 11 o'clock. Have a great evening.